you know, when I, when I seen pink polish on his fingernails. It's not even that the polish is pink. It's just that he's six years, six years old. He's a boy. Mm -hmm. And he was exposed to something at school that, that I don't condone and I don't believe in at home. Welcome to PTG TV. This is your host, Antonio Hicks. Joining me in today's discussion, parental rights and school choice. Where do activities fit in? Is Tajay Williams discussing her own experience involving the Brunswick County school system. So welcome on the show, Tajay. Hello. So how's everything right. going with you today? How's your your boy, your son doing? Um, we're well. We're doing pretty good. Um you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Enjoying the summer. Um my name is Tajay Williams. I'm not gonna, you know, one that's close to their age, so I'm just gonna say I'm in my late thirties. <laughs> and Even though um, black don't crack. Exactly. I have a fifteen year old and a, a six year old. Um and I've been living in Brunswick, Georgia for almost my life, but it's probably gonna be time to go in a couple of years. Um I actually work for the school system. <laughs> oh, you do work for the school system? Yes. Oh no, I didn't know I that. Okay. Work. Yeah, I actually work for the school system in transportation. Okay. Uh, I don't have no problems with transportation or working for the school. Um, and that's about it. So um, what has been your experience with your kids being involved? Because I don't know about this new school system that's out now. Because my two boys, they're 20, Jesus Christ, he's 23? No, 22. And my youngest is about to be 21 in August. So in a year in graduate college. So... I don't know how it is nowadays and I don't I can't even imagine how it is nowadays having young kids in school especially with these new policies and stuff that's out now in the school system it's um it's it's okay but it could be a little a little better um as far as the situation with sage now what situation so you had let, let's let's get into that then before we even get into any questions so you did have a situation that just came up that you want to um discuss and you want to talk about which which goes into this discussion itself like where do activities fit in and notifying parents of any activities taking place within the school system so this situation happened with your youngest son he's the one that's six years old right yes his name is sage with sage and now Tell us exactly what happened with Sage and what's got you upset with the school system and them not notifying the parents of you know what's going on within the schools. Well, Friday, May the seventeenth, you know he usually go to you know they go to school, and then after school is the boys and girls club. So the boys and girls club is over at six thirty. Mm -hmm. Um, today they had career day, but usually when they have events, they send out permission slips asking, "Is it okay?" But um, for your child to do certain things in the activity. Mm -hmm. um, I picked him up from the Boys and Girls Club and one of the supervis supervisors pulled me to the side and she was like, Sage's nails are pink with polish. And I said, why? She was like, I'm not sure. So one of the other children in the Boys and Girls Club Center pointed it out and then another supervisor pointed it out. And she said there were also other several little boys with polish on their nails, nails as well. Mm -hmm. So I asked them what happened, and um, so they had career day. The beginning of the day, they went to see the firemen and police officers, and then they entered the cafeteria, mm -hmm. and um, it was a nail tech there that allowed them to polish their nails. And he told me that he told them that he didn't want his nails polished. Mm -hmm. They were listening, and they told him it was okay. So they had him polishing the nail tech assistant fingernails mm -hmm. and she was polishing his nails and his teacher his kindergarten teacher she was taking pictures of the activity um when i reached out to her so it's it's an app that we use called class dojo mm -hmm. when i class dojo to reach out to her i was like could you please call me it's about sage now class dojo they show you when the teacher reads your message mm -hmm. so she wrote the message and then it shows you when the teacher logs out. So she read it and then she logged off. And um, this is before, no, this is after I posted pictures on Facebook because as you can see, I was highly livid about it. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people say that wasn't the right way to go, but 
and my mind wasn't. You know, when I, I seen pink polish on his fingernails. It's not even that the polish is pink. It's just that he's six years, six years old. He's a boy. Mm -hmm. And he was exposed to something at school that, that I don't condone and I don't believe in at home. So I seen like, in my in my eyesight, I seen red flags. Um, right. Did you um, get in touch with the principal at all or the assistant principal? Monday, when Monday came, no one, um, over the weekend, I emailed the school. Uh -huh. Monday came, no one emailed me back. No one called me. I got in touch with an advocate named Keisha Burnett. Brunette, mm -hmm. she reached out to me and we had a um, a meeting with the principal and the assistant principal. Um, and what was their response? Sadly, um, the principal, um, Ella Green, mm -hmm. she didn't, she, she seemed like she didn't know anything about it. So I'm not sure she was even in the, in the school when they started the activity. She doesn't know if the she doesn't know what the polish looked like. She didn't she didn't know if it was non toxic. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't know that he told them no. You might as well say she was clueless, or she was acting like she was clueless. But I can I just, uh, in her I mean in her defense, I can I can see that to a degree because if you're having a career day, I mean as a principal you're not necessarily gonna know. All the activities you just know it's a career day, so you don't you don't, you're not gonna know all the activities taking place. Well, I think you would know some of the activities, but you I don't should. think it would. I don't think you would know to the degree to where you know they're exposing these young boys to having them do that. That's why I would see where the teacher would be at fault for not even instructing the administration about what they're doing and what their intentions are. But you, she, she should know because when you come into school, when you come in a when anyone comes into school as a parent. Hold on. <laughs> Go sit down. Just give me a second. Um, <laughs> that was age. We want to build airplanes, <laughs> but um, in the in the school, it's even strict for parents to enter the school. Mm -hmm. Like in the mornings, if we want to walk our children to class, we have to go to the front, show your ID sign and have a visitor's pass. Right. So if you have a nail tag in the school, and then she didn't even, when we had the meeting, she she said she didn't even pull to see if the lady was a licensed nail tag. So you don't even know if she was certified to be even in the school. She could have been someone off the streets. They just right. say they, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you, you make it strict for the parents to enter the school, why wasn't it strict for her to enter the school? Right, right. I mean, I'm in agreement with that 100%. I mean, I even have issue with, um, oh, little man can be in the shot. He's okay. <laughs> I mean, I told you I got two boys myself. I'm I'm kind of partial to boys. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, to me, even the nail tech. So I thought initially when we talked, and this is how I, I met Taja. I, I saw her through um, a post on Facebook and then one of my uh, friends, cohorts, they reached out to me to have her on to talk about the issue because I have issue with that as well too. And it's to, to I'm trying to say like why the nail tech themselves would not have thought to say, okay, well, I'm not too sure about, you know, painting little Girl, boys yeah. nails. Yeah, yeah, I paint, right. Cause I'm like, that's to me, I would, I would question that. Like I, I would never, cause I mean, let's say I was, I don't know. I'm trying to think something that mostly boys would typically do. The pictures. No, I haven't even seen the pictures. Oh, so the nail tech, which it probably doesn't make a difference, but in my eyesight, she was African American, so I I would have said it's just due to the girls and not the boys. But right, yeah, she was it's, the black so, nail tech yeah. assistants and you know the white teachers or whatnot. But I still would have said let's just do the girls and not the boys. But for the teacher to tell him it was okay, knowing it's not okay. Yeah. And you didn't, you know, like I said, they pull out, they send out permission slips for everything else. It should have been a permission right. slip. Say, are you comfortable with your boys getting their nail polish or them polishing each other's nails instead of just allowing them to do it? 
And then he went the whole day with the with the fingernail polish on. What if he would have got? I, I asked him that question in a meeting as well. What if he would have got bullied at the boys and girls club? Right. The boys and girls club that my son goes to is kind of like on the rough side. Right. You know, yeah. so, <laughs> what if he would got bullied? Yeah. And he got hurt and beat up, and you know, you could at least took the polish, remove the polish off his nails or something. But right. it's really, it's really about taking my parent rights away from me and exposing my child to something that I have to reset in his mind mentally. Right. I mean, because even at the end of the day, though, whether you are in agreement with anybody's lifestyle, it has nothing to even do with that. So, I mean, people can't even come and say, well, you know, well, this person is being um, homophobic or anything. I'm like, it has nothing to do with that. It's like, it's you doing something to my child and changing my child's appearance they changing them up from what I sent them out of home from looking like to not look like something totally different. Cause we wouldn't want the same thing for little girls. So we want to, we want to send our daughters to school with a dress on. And all of a sudden you change them over into some pants in the middle of the day without informing me or even asking me about anything or ask me to even come up there and bring them a change of clothes. And next thing I see my child, they look totally different than how I was sent them to school. I would have issue with that. So this has nothing to do with, you know, who's in agreement with anybody's lifestyle or their community. I don't care about any of those things at all because I'm, I'm sending agreement with you. If anything happens with my kids at school and it's going gonna, it's gonna to change my kids' appearance, I need to be notified about it. Yeah. At the end of the day, I need to be but notified about it. Wasn't notified about it. I didn't have any callback. I believe if I didn't um, go and have a meeting, they wouldn't have reached out. No. No. Yeah, it, it wouldn't have reached out. And I also went to the superintendent, the assistant superintendent, um, went to speak with them as well mm -hmm. it's it's just a it's just like a, a nonchalant apology it's just oh we're sorry and it's i don't think they see the the, the bigger picture so they generally don't. Now, I will say this is the same thing from when my, my son was in school. My oldest son was bullied when he was in, was it middle school? Middle school or high school, he was bullied by this young lady. And she kept bullying him, bullying him. He was talking to the teachers. Teachers wouldn't do anything about it until he made he threatened her on social media. But he threatened her out of frustration. And him threatening her, they took it back to this. Her, her friends took it to the school system, and they tried to expel my son. And it took me to come up there and I was going in. And I'm sitting here like in, almost in your situation. I'm like, what, what are you going to do to the little girl? I was like, let's, let's get to the root cause of all of this. My son would not have had to threaten anybody had you handled the situation up front. And then in your case, you wouldn't have to be dealing with the, the, the post that you made on Facebook or any of the, or, or you know, I'm sorry. If, no, I wouldn't be dealing with the post on Facebook or even posted if someone was to reach out before reach out to me right and tell you how they're going to address the issue because that's why that's yeah. really what it boils down to okay how are you dealing with the root cause of the issue at hand and the root cause is the the, the teacher not yeah. notifying a parent of what they have taken place within the, the classroom because it's like there there is no reason in the world why you should allow a child a young man a young boy to even go through that and like you say even if they did do that i mean if you want to even if they want to hide what he, what happened during the school day at least clean it off to where you won't subject him to any mental abuse. Because, I mean, I was right. bullied in school, and I know how that felt. And I'm like, to have a kid go through that, and now he's going to have to start questioning himself as to why somebody was doing that to him and why, even as a teacher, somebody you're supposed to be able to trust allowed that to happen without even making sure that his safety and mental well-being is okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what if he was allergic? That, too. That, too. I mean, because you don't know people's allergies. And you know, I mean, especially when it comes to something like that, like you said, it's not something that you teach at home. And because I mean, you're raising your kids a certain way, which you're allowed to. So it's like, why would you do that without even because we bring up issues now about what kids are reading in classrooms. So we want to make sure that we send permission slips home to make sure they're not learning about any African American studies and things of that nature. And if they cool, if we are, they are teaching that they're cool with it. So I'm like, why yeah. wouldn't it be the same thing with this, which when I'm not gonna get too political on this, because we're gonna stay on this one issue. But is this I'm, I'm standing in agreement with you because I, I even brought this up to my wife and she said the same thing because she was living. She was like, how are you going to change my kid's appearance up and you don't even talk to me? And and then now, my, you have, now you have him confused because the next day it was, the, the next day it was his birthday. So now he thinks it's okay to get his nails polished for his birthday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
that's no. I have to fix that. Right. Yeah, it's, and, it's not okay. Yeah, it, it was nonchalant apologies. They wasn't um I even asked um what did I ask her about counseling. I said, what about counseling and therapy? So he so he doesn't think that's okay. It was nonchalant about that. And I asked about what did home. they say? I, it was a tone, the tone, the tone in one woman's voice. Oh yeah, we we can do that. That's fine. If that's what you want, you know, that's fine. You know, moving around, body language, you know, basically having a little attitude. Mm -hmm. Um, said something about homeschool. Once again, um, the assistant principal was white, and then the the next lady, I'm, I I don't even remember her name, but um, she was one of the sisters. <laughs> And I said something about homeschool. And um, she's like, you sure you want to do that? I don't think twice about that. So now I'm feeling like you think I'm just, you think I'm not smart enough to teach my child. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like I'm really going to show that I am smart enough to teach my child. It was like they, they was looking at me like another black, single, un uneducated mother. Mm -hmm. like they was looking at me like, She'll just sweep this under the rug. She's not gonna let this go. But they what they don't know is that I I have see legal assistance and they're gonna do something about it. Absolutely, you shouldn't let it go. It doesn't yeah. matter. And my thing, and I mean, so I, I know this know. is something we have to deal with in rural communities and urban communities, and they think they look down upon mm -hmm. us like it's that we don't know how to push an issue. And then you say homeschool, they're, they're not thinking that, oh, well, you can go seek out resources to homeschool your child, which they have a ton of resources. My my cousin homeschooled all of their kids, and they graduated high school early and graduated college early, so it can be done. And I guess they're saying that to deter you from doing it. I'm like, and my thing would be, though, it goes back to what I said initially. If they would address the issue and have fixed the issue and what, apologize, what? sincerely apologize about it, tell you what steps they're going to take to handle it going forward, how they're going to deal with the teacher without her knowing finding it, or what taking place within the classroom, you wouldn't even be here. Right. You, I'm sure you would still be pissed off, but at least you understand what actions are going to be taking place going forward and it's not going to happen again. But for them to try to want to blow it and sweep it up under the rug and make it seem like it wasn't a big of a deal, no, nah, that's not right at all. No, it's not. Because on the um, the website of Georgia Department of Education, when you look at parent rights and student rights, that's basically one of them. Like, you do not change a, a child's appearance without the parent's permission. And that's kind of considered as grooming as well. It's, it's, it's basically just, you did something without my permission. That's, right. That's what... It's no different than the outcry when they had the teacher getting his hair unbraided by his students. And everybody yeah. had the teacher fired. Yeah. So, so I'm yeah. like, it's the same exact thing. It's different scenarios, but it's still the same exact thing. There's, there's, the child is doing something outside of what the parents would allow their child to be doing. Yep. There's so, another. Yeah, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. It's another word. No, another video with something similar to that, but I don't think that teacher got fired with the, the children playing in his hair. Oh, he got fired. No, the the which one? The one with the the, the you talking about the one the the black teacher that was getting his hair unbraided with the by the girls? Yeah, yeah he got five, and then the white teacher they also had him your little girl's playing in his hair. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Oh yeah, but um, I just we can go for a little bit if you want to, but I because <laughs> it's just it's just deep. It's some people think it's not deep. They just like I said, just think it's regular fingernail polish and oh let kids be kids and some people think it's but demasculating not... the yeah, child. So it's like <sighs> it's different. And it's 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 just a little deeper than that to me. Um besides not asking for my permission and exposing him. The the biggest thing is is exposing him to something that's that I haven't been doing in my home. Right. So I I, if it was kids yeah. outside playing, they're playing house. Let's, I'm, I'm gonna give them an example. I'm playing house. Then I can see them making an argument because you don't know what's going on. There's two kids outside playing around, and he might be playing with a little girl, and she might do it because whatever reason they're just playing house or whatever. 
in that aspect of it, he comes home. You will see because he's going to come home. He'll be like, what the hell is going on? Why, why are you doing I mean, you'll handle it that way. But to be in the presence of an adult, that's a totally different situation. That's not a kid being a kid. That was like orchestrated. Like you set yeah. that up and you you, you had it ready to go and you gave it to him. Yeah. yeah. And so then you, good. even after he said no, you still encouraged him to do it, telling him <laughs> it's not going to be that big of a deal. And then as a stick show, they soak everything up. Right. Yeah. Uh-oh. So you when it what? comes to just communication alone, like what do you think the in in all of this the like the parent child relationship and students well being might be in this because i know how i feel about it and like i said i know how i felt when i was bullied coming up or, or certain things that happened to me in school repeat that question again so how Please. can the lack of no you're fine how can the lack of communication affect the parent child relationship and student well-being so i think that with them telling him it's okay to do it it's almost undermining your own authority at your house. I was just going to say that. So it will almost that, affect y'all's relationships because now it's going to be questioning, like, why is my mama telling me not to do this when, when everybody else is telling me it's okay? That, that's actually what happened. Um, when I said we, you know, that's, we don't do that. That's for girls, um, mm -hmm. not boys. And then he'll uh, argue back saying, well, Ms. Davis and Ms. Chance said it was okay. They said it was okay. So why are you not saying it's okay? So that would confuse the communication as me as a parent, because now he's thinking that I'm telling him wrong. Right. I'm the parent thinking I'm telling him wrong, and um, and also he he thought that he was in trouble, which he wasn't. I didn't like yell at him or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and as far as the well being of the child in the school, yeah, I just started thinking about it over and over again i don't want to get upset <laughs> yeah don't don't i mean i because i can finish it up for you because to me it will cause an unhealthy relationship between a child's well-being with the school and his relationship with the school system because now he's going to be questioning why they would even put him yeah. in that situation yeah because now now i feel like I, I can't even trust trust the person that's teaching him in school and too, I mean, even people within it, it's almost like you, you're setting him up for failure because you can tell him that that's not what little boys do. And he may see something totally different at school, excuse me, to where he might start thinking differently about those kids whose parents are okay with that. And it's almost setting him up to a degree to where he might get angry and stuff and start saying something to other kids who, whose parents are okay with boys putting this stuff on or wearing dresses and stuff yeah so it's like to prevent all of that from happening it's like why would you even allow that to even take place because he does have the communication with me and him a little upside down and i have to keep repeating myself you know this doesn't happen you don't do this and well they said it was okay so that's it makes that communication go left when i'm trying to get get it back together get it back right right and, yeah, like I said, it, it just makes me feel like I just can't trust him being in the school. Cause what? Cause if I was let, if I was to let him go back next year, what are you gonna do next? Right, cause if you're not addressing the issues that you bring a concern with now, it's like okay, what are you gonna allow going forward? Yeah. Well, one thing they said was um, they just they would do better next time. They know they messed up. Um, they. Sh they wasn't thinking. That was one of the key words the principal was saying. They wasn't thinking. I think it was just a sorry um, excuse to say he wasn't thinking. Because, I mean, what would have been if it was a makeup artist? Would they have put makeup on boys, too? They probably would have. <laughs> and probably I, I'm, I mean, I'm with you 100%. I mean, because certain things I don't think anybody should, any kids should be exposed to when it comes to certain activities. Yeah, they probably would Because like I said, if people are concerned about African-American studies because they don't want their kids feeling like, you know, they're less than or they're the cause of some of, the, of racial tension within this country, which the kids at that age don't get taught about any of that stuff anyway, then the same concern should be made about, which is weird to me because I'm trying to understand why nobody within that community, the, I don't even want to say that the... Uh, I'm not even gonna put it on this podcast, on this episode. Within the other, the far right community haven't reached out to you to say that, and I know why they haven't, but 
we're going to help you fight this battle because we don't think, uh, we think little boys should be little boys and they yeah, shouldn't get exposed to anything like that. You say they have? And I said it's not okay. No, I'm saying, I'm trying to understand what, what people in the far right community have not reached out to you. Um, on some comments, some of them agree that they're living their life, but they also feel like for him to be a six year old boy, that's pushing it on him. They wouldn't allow it as well. Yeah, no. But some some of them agree, some of them didn't. But I actually have a, a friend, um, I guess you could say far left. Uh -huh. would you say far right? Far he, right and far he, left, yeah. Yeah, but he's he's that way and he said that's just not you don't do that at a young age. You know, they're grown now so they can make their own decision. But that that's that age, yeah. That's a yeah. that's a no Cause it's not something for you to be thinking about. I mean, cause that's an aspect of you let let kids be kids, let kids play, let kids have fun. I mean, you can have gender specific stuff at that age, and let them find out who they are as they get older. When they get older, exactly. Not they have six years old. Yeah, they could have had them outside building something or anything but that. And my thing is, I'm fine with them having a nail titian at the school system. I'm fine with that because it gives them opportunities to see different jobs and careers that's out there, but not to actually paint them. Because, I mean, it could be something yeah. that... Their cuticles or, or something like that. So, yeah. I mean, they could have just... They could have cleaned their nails. Like, okay, well, when most guys come in, you know, they don't do all these colors and stuff, but we will, you know, clean their nails and stuff for them, which I'm fine with that, too, because, I mean, most guys go in and get pedicures and manicures, too, but they don't yeah. get colors and stuff. Paint yeah, on it. Right. And yeah, even right. some that do, I'm not gonna question, you know, question who they are and their masculinity and any of those things. I'm just saying as a kid, you should not be doing it for a little boy. Now it's one thing to be polishing his stuff and then let's tell him like, you know, you gotta keep your nails clean. I do believe in good hygiene. <laughs> I mean, they can say that, you know, even though you're a little boy and I know y'all be outside playing around and tussling around on the ground and stuff, but you still want to make sure that you know you practice good hygiene and keep your nails and stuff clean. I'm fine with that one hundred percent. But to paint his nails and put, yeah, no. I just feel like, I don't know if I should say, I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> but, um, and I know you say you didn't want to get into all that on this podcast as well. No, I don't. I mean, you can you can bring whatever you want to bring up. I'm saying, I don't, I'm, you know. What about the heterosexual, you know, people? Why, why was, why was my rights swept under the, under the rug and ignored, but theirs or not right kind of and, well. and that's why i bring those so you have the two different dynamics when you're talking about politics or political groups or where people stand at when they come to beliefs you have when i say the far right you have the extreme far right who don't believe in their kids being taught about anything from um, black history month slavery any of those things because they say it's going to impact their well, these white kids to impact their own belief system to make them feel like they were the cause of black suffering and the stuff that we had to deal with when it comes to slavery and policy, Jim Crow laws, all of those things that would affect us in our community. And then you have the far left who is like, you know, teach kids everything, let kids express themselves no matter what age they are. You can expose them to anything from um, trans rights or trans activities to all those things and just let them kids decide on. I'm in the middle. I'm not even a conservative. I'm a, I'm, I do consider myself to be on the left side, but certain things I don't allow when it comes to children because I think children should be more structured and stuff. And as they get older, they can decide on, you know, where they stand and what their belief systems are when it comes to, you know, who they love and who they want to be with. But as a kid, let children be children. You don't have to show them by anything. You have to show them by gender specific stuff, but you don't have to enforce and shove stuff down their throat. Now, to go back to what you were saying as far as we talk about everything else as far as hetero, outside of heterosexual stuff. I kind of agree with you to a degree. <laughs> I do kind of agree with you. It's, it's, I, it's, just, go ahead. Like I said, I don't want, we don't want to go too much too much deep into it. It's just they should have asked for permission. Right. They should have should have communicated. Um, it was deep to me because, like I said, I had to. And I still have to reset his mind so he can know that we we do not mother, mom doesn't allow that in the household. Right, so, and you have their right. 
So it's basically that's 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 what it's about. You didn't ask for my permission. You should have. You should have sent out permission slips. You should have communicated with me, communicated back with me on Dojo. That's another thing that pissed me off. She read my message and didn't even reply. Right, and that's the thing. That's what I'm like. That's why I said early on in the show is like nobody's saying that anybody's against the LBGTQ community. Nobody's saying that at all. Or some people being homophobic. We're not saying that at all. I'm not. I mean. I have friends and family members that are in that community. And I love them to death and I will go to war for them. But when yeah. it comes to parents rising, what parents should be notified about, I don't think that's acceptable. And it has nothing yeah. to do with him being able to express it. He, it wasn't about him expressing himself. He wasn't even expressing it was himself. About, there it was, was about him telling them, no, right. I don't want to do it. Right. He told them, okay, that's, that's, that's what you, that's what she messed up at. Right. <laughs> That's what she screwed up at. You just said, "Oh, it's okay." Like you're not his mother. Why would you tell him it's okay? Right. And even if you, even if he was not, even if he never said anything at all, they should not. Your son, when he went to school, or your daughter, when she goes to school, should come home exactly. the exact same way that they went to school. Whether they said anything in disagreement or in agreement, even if they were okay with it, I need to check in with your mother to make sure she's okay with it. Because you might think it's okay, but when you get home, your mom might be some feeling something to or your father might be feeling something totally different. Yeah, good thing I'm not I wasn't the type of parent to you might as well say beat his ass. I don't know. <laughs> you know, because some parents would have just took yeah. it out on the yeah. took it out on the and, and and tow us behind up. Good thing yeah. I didn't do that. You know, yeah. so because they were yeah. questioning the boy, like why didn't you tell them to, to take it off? Yeah, like why are you and tell and it's like he's not thinking about that and this they wasn't thinking about it but i want y'all are grown yeah i don't understand why didn't anyone think about what how the parents may feel when their kids are being sent home no no one thought about this right I guess it was more i guess it was more on the fact oh it's the last day of school we're just gonna do whatever it's the last day you know and even that's unacceptable. So now that this is all out and now that you have a huge number of people commenting on your post that's out there, like what are your next steps? Um, next steps are, like I said, I took um, legal assistance mm -hmm. or legal advice. So I have um, a letter that I have to send out to the Georgia Department of Schools for the superintendent. His name is Richard Woods. Mm -hmm. It's going to send out what happened you know the event um you'll see we'll have another interview i don't want to put too much out there no i'm not asking you on it yeah yeah so you know, i've been doing everything in silence um i'm not letting this go out i don't believe this should be anything swept under the rug because right yeah so have you reached out to the school board yet yes i didn't have a meeting with the principal of the elementary school uh -huh. A meeting with the school board so okay. now I have to go through the next um chain of commands which is the state the georgia department of schools in atlanta okay so that's okay the next step. yeah so definitely um de yeah definitely keep me informed on you know what's happening with him and as far as now i know you said you had to talk to me had to keep reiterating some stuff to him like how was he doing and going forward since after that um he was, he was, he, he, he was okay. Um, that first week, um, like the first week he thought it was okay. Um, and you know how, well, that, that weekend after, uh -huh. you know how you be in and it's this, how I know that they was doing this as well. You know how women be in the nail salon, they do this. Yeah. And that's, that's what he was doing. And I had to snap that out. So it's like, like I said, I just said, I just had to reset his mind mentally so he can know that's not okay. My beliefs, I just don't think that's okay for a six year old. My son, anyway. But um, other than that, he's doing fine. He said he doesn't want to go back to that school. So. And I can understand that. Yeah, he said he doesn't want to go back. After that, I, I'm thinking he's seen how angry I was. But like I said, I wasn't fussing at him or saying anything to him. Right. Just angry that he didn't ask for permission. But. I am smart enough and I will homeschool my child. So I'm going to show them that I can do this. And, and there's, you have um, a ton of technology that can help you out too. Exactly. And I, Some, I was, I'll send it to you too. 
You can. Thank you. I was already thinking about homeschooling him anyway. Mm -hmm. And that was just the icing on the cake. After that happened. So everything happened for a reason. And now the, the Georgia Cyber Academy, they're taking kindergarten up now. So, yeah. Everything now, happened for a reason. Now, what is that? If you want to answer real quick. Academy, it's, yeah. a homes, it's a homeschool program. Like a virtual homeschool program. Okay. So a lot of people that's from what I see it's like millions of people that um teach their kids from there. And I know a couple of people that live in Brunswick mm -hmm. that their kids that same program. Yeah, and that's the and the beauty behind as we start to wrap it up, beauty behind technology nowadays is is that you can get assistance from the AI stuff that exists out there. Matter of fact, I just went to a conference yeah. or a summit last week. And that was one of the things that we talked about at the summit about doing, um, being able to use AI to help teach you on on, on any topic and have it read it back to you and you ask it questions and it answer those questions for you. Like verbally ask those questions, not even type it in, verbally ask those questions and it, it help you out with it. So, well, I'm glad to see that he's doing okay. Like I said, I'm standing in agreement with you. I don't think, and it has, no, I'm, I'm, I keep having to re re reiterate this because I'm like, I'm not trying to start no smoke with nobody. <laughs> Nobody, it's not nothing to do with the LBGTQ community. It has, it's not being homophobic. It's about parental rights and what, what parents should be informed of anything taking place within their child. Because like we said throughout this whole show, it's is that no, when the kid go to school, the kids should look the exact same way when they come back home as they look when they went to school. Exactly. And if you're going to do anything to in their appearance, I don't care if it's an accident that happened at school, the parents should be notified. Because if anything does happen to school, the parents would be notified of it anyway. So they, they made a mistake on that. And you're right, you wouldn't even be here today if they had addressed it responsibly and said, how are they going to do it going forward? And so because they didn't take the concern seriously, that's why, you know, Miss Williams is where she is today and why I feel the way I feel. And a lot of people feel the same way we feel in regards to this issue. Exactly. So any final what? thoughts you want to leave us with, Tajay? Um. I'm not done yet. Like I said, it's not going to be swept under the rug, and we will probably have us another Zoom uh, meeting, another Zoom video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, thank you for coming on. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I said I have a lot of work to do with that issue, so yeah. Well, thank you for coming on again and getting your story out there, because I'm definitely going to spread around my platform, and I'm going to hand it out to the people that I know, especially those that are in the political space. Because like I said, again, I don't think this is something that should get swept under the rug because if if we can talk about people's rights and what they don't want when it comes to what they're being taught at school, then the same thing should be applied towards what's happening with your children while they're at school and them doing things that parents shouldn't be allowed to be doing. I agree. So thank you all for tuning in to this week's episode. Make sure you all follow all of my episodes on, on PGTV, the online, my website. And until next time, y'all be safe. Make sure y'all keep in, uh, informed on all the activities, on policies taking place, especially when it comes to education, because there are not new policies coming out, for, especially in the state of Georgia from, uh, from, from Brian Kemp's office. So y'all be aware of all those things. Get actively involved. Make yourself available in the community. Until next time, I'll be you TV. Hey, yes, and go definitely go vote, especially for your school board officials, because your school board officials yeah. will determine what's taking place within the local school system. So get out, yeah. go vote, be active. So until next time, BCTV. Out.